and we are live. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we will be discussing how T-Pain blew $40 million to the point where he had no more money left in his bank account and people actually had to lend him money to buy his children Burger King. We're definitely going to get into that interview. Also, what we're going to discuss is we're going to talk about financial literacy and we're going to use this as a teaching moment, not a moment to bash or put T-Pain down, but use this as a moment where we can talk about good debt versus bad debt. And we're also going to talk about the opportunity cost where you, once you put money into something that's a depreciating asset, you have to begin to think about all of the other places you could have parked that money and actually made a return rather than putting your money into cars and jewelry. Uh, that actually loses money. So uh, as you come into the chat, uh, please type one if you can hear and see me clearly. Uh, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Also, if you want to uh, keep in contact with me or message me, follow me on Instagram and that way you'll be able to DM me and I'll be able to respond to you once I get a chance to. Uh, also, um, if you want to support this content financially, a link to my PayPal will be in the description below. So let's look at the chat and see what's going on. And of course, guys, you know we're going to talk about crypto. We're going to talk about investing in gold and silver. You know that. We're also going to talk about the stock market. And again, all of everything that we're going to discuss tonight is going to be based around good debt versus bad debt and opportunity costs. Because this brother blew a lot of money that would have been better off <laughs> put in a whole host of other different places. So um, as we can see, everyone can see me. Um, everyone can see me nice and clearly. We're also going to talk about predatory lending. Uh, this is something that's going to come up into um, uh, this, the new presidential debates in South Carolina, the 48 laws of YouTube. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate it. Uh, the two books right now that you see on my screen, The Millionaire Next Door and Rich Dad, Poor Dad, are two basic books, very simple books, easy to read books, but they should be required for anyone who is looking to build wealth over time. Uh, on this channel, you don't, you will never hear me talking about the hottest penny stock that's going to make you a millionaire. You're never going to hear me talk about you're just going to buy this one stock or you're going to read this one book or you're going to take this one course and you're going to become a millionaire. You will never hear me say that. Wealth is built over time. So when you hear me speaking, I'm speaking from the standpoint of if you deliberately and intentionally over a 10, 15, 20 year period focus on setting aside money you will definitely be able to build wealth over time. Now, wealth can be $100,000 for you. Wealth can be a diversified portfolio of $500,000 for you. What I'm giving you is a template. This is not, oh, you do A, B, C, and D, you're going to get rich. That's not how investing works. And I want you to always understand that anytime you see or hear someone telling you that if you buy this, you're going to get rich, run away. Uh, they're selling you a get rich quick scheme. You don't get rich quick. You build wealth over time. And Rich Dad Poor Dad is a very, very, very good book as far as good debt versus bad debt is concerned, right? Credit card debt could be good debt or it could be bad debt, depending on how you use it, right? Buying a home, depending on where you buy the home, how you buy the home and what your intentions are for the home, it could be good debt or it could be bad debt. Right. Financing a car. If you finance a used car that you plan on holding for the next five to seven years and you're using it to make money, it could be that could be good debt to go into financing a one point two million dollar Bugatti and you end up having the car repossessed. That's bad debt. That doesn't make any sense. So uh, with that being said, guys, let's get over to um, the video. Let's watch a little bit of the video and then I'm going to give you some commentary and then we're going to dive into of the principles of opportunity cost and good debt versus bad debt. So let's flip this over. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's turn this off so we don't have that echo. And we're good now. We let it go. Yeah. Because at that point, that's when I was running out of money. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's when uh, my... Because at that point, that's when I was running out of money. You know what I'm saying? And that's when uh, my accountant was like, dude, you just bought a Bugatti. You're like out of money. And I was like, no, I'm not. I got this house I want to get. I got this other house for my assistants and, you know, all my, my runners and, and <laughs> my producers and stuff. So we bought a house after that and we just started going crazy with the money. I wasn't paying attention to it. Because, you know, I thought if I didn't have access to my own accounts, then I wouldn't have to look at it. So I <laughs> That's one of the first mistakes right there. He said, I thought if I didn't have access to my accounts, I wouldn't have to look at it. When, when you're dealing with your money, um, you should be definitely monitoring your money at least on a monthly basis as far as to looking at uh, what's coming in versus what's going out, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to build wealth. You need to make sure that the person or the people who are helping you invest or managing your money, that they are competent in what they're doing. And they understand what they're doing. And he's going to highlight right now how the people who were managing his money, they didn't know any, anything more than he did, which is part of the problem. See, most entertainers, they have a three to five year window of when they're hot, when they're successful. Even athletes, they have a three to five year window to make as much money. And they build up these larger than, li larger than life personas. And they're spending all of this money and they're making... 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year. And they build up this lifestyle based upon 10, 15, 20 million dollars. And then once they stop, they don't invest enough of that money. Instead, they waste that money. And see, most people, they go broke through mismanagement. He's going to explain a lot of the money he lost was in real estate. Most people lose a lot of money by trusting the wrong people. You should not be you should not be investing into anything that you do not understand. If you don't understand it, you shouldn't be investing in it, period. And if the person who is trying to invest your money, if they don't have any skin in the game, if they can't show you that they're doing it, don't let them manage your money. You know what I'm saying? It was bad business choices. Mm -hmm. Who did you sell a Bugatti to? Uh, uh, back to the dealership I got okay. from. How yeah. much did you get for it? Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, they, I think they gave me 800 for it. Jeez. Oh, wow. God. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I drove it off the lot, it probably went to that. He bought a brand so, new so, one? Yeah. Yeah, Brand yeah. new and they had a hole in the radio in it and no one. No, I put the hole in the radio. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow. laughs> yeah. This is driving it fast everywhere. When you say you was broke, was you had like zero dollars broke? I like had to borrow money to get my kids Burger King. Wow. Yeah. After having what's the most you ever had in the bank at one time? Uh forty million. Jesus Christ, T Pain. How do you have a headline? <laughs> oh my God. I'm gonna replay that for you again. He just said forty million dollars. It's the most money he's had in a bank account. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> this is driving it fast everywhere. When you say you was broke, you had like zero dollars broke? I like had to borrow money to get my kids Burger King. Wow. Yeah. After having, what's the most you ever had in the bank at one time? Uh, 40 million. Jesus Christ, t -Pain. How do you have a headline? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. 40 million dollars <laughs> to zero? Yeah. And it was yeah. just all bad spending? No bad investments? Oh, or was it? It was, it was a lot of bad investments. Uh, a lot of things. What that did you just, invest in that didn't work for forty million dollars? What, what, what were you invested in? Real estate. Real estate. Ah, yeah. Shoot. You buy retail? No, but I was letting my manager do it, and he was way more optimistic than I was. <laughs> so what do you mean optimistic? Yeah, like he doing. would just buy complete dumps and think that we can just paint, and then we should be he fine. Know what he was doing. Never sold anything that that we bought. Uh, Even yeah. now, like none of those areas y'all bought in became we gentrified. Had to let, we had to or? Let them go. We had to let them go. No, yeah. I mean, we, we just had to let everything go. So, you know. Is uh, there anything if you would have held on to would be worth a lot now? No, not at all. My These God. were in terrible neighborhoods. But where, I didn't know. where? In Florida? It was, yeah, it was all in Florida. South Florida. <laughs> 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 because that's where my managers lived. So, so you see, again, I'm, and this is not meant to attack him. He's bounced back. He's no longer broke. He's doing well financially, which is good for him, and that's a blessing. I know that he's battled through substance abuse issues. And one thing about me, I'm never going to kick someone when they're down. Um, so kudos to him for bouncing back. We have to use stuff like this as a moment to learn. Don't take this as me bashing him. Do not take this as me attacking him. This is a moment for us to learn and build from these type of situations when people go through this. Again, he had his manager managing his money and investing into real estate when the manager didn't know anything about real estate. And see, this is what happens once you become successful and you start getting money. Uh, these are four ways that most 
entre- most entertainers and most athletes lose money. Number one, through friends and family. Because once you become successful, now everyone feels that because you made it, they made it. And now they're going to come to you every other week with some new scheme or some new idea that they've read in a book. And they don't have any experience in that particular field. The next thing where a lot of athletes and entertainers go broke with is that taxes. See, they don't understand that you actually have to pay your taxes and they rack up a lot of IRS debt, which gets them into trouble. Also, children, having too many baby mamas can actually hurt you or having too many uh, children in general, if you have them with one woman, can actually hurt you. And divorce, having to pay alimony and child support can bankrupt you. Owing too much taxes can bankrupt you. Overconsuming can actually hurt you. And this is extremely important. To lose $40 million is an insane amount of money. That is 128 of you watching this. Please, guys, hit that like button. Now, let's play this a little bit. He was like, nah, I'll just get some shit down the road. I can check on it every now and then. And just like, yeah, crack house. That never worked out. Still a crack house to this day. Still a crack house right now. People are fucking in there right now. I guarantee it. It's weird. (laughs) Bro, that's my worst nightmare. Forty million dollars to zero. My God. Yeah, but you know, you get back up and you learn, man. Well, you know. Yeah, you do. He did. <laughs> Took it down to Miami. Got on the track. Now look, I want you to look at this. No. Yeah, you do. He did. <laughs> this is the car that he purchased. This is a two point one million dollar car, the Bugatti Veyron. Two point one million dollars for a car. Here's a tip. You only have one pair of feet. Therefore, you don't need that many pairs of shoes. You only can drive one car at a time. That means you don't need three or four cars. You only can live in one house at a time. So as far as a primary residence, you only need one. You need to be a little bit smarter when you consume things. And guys, don't worry. We're not going to focus on him the entire video we're going to start focusing on everyday people obviously we don't have 2.1 million to spend on a car but compare this to you and you're making forty thousand dollars a year you know how many people i know they make forty or fifty thousand dollars a year and they're driving a fifty thousand dollar car or they're driving a thirty thousand dollar car sixty percent of their net income is going to their car Think about that. You know what I mean? People are out here over living above their means. So when we look at him and we say $2.1 million, I will never do that. Well, you there some of you are actually doing what he did. He overconsumed with a $2.1 million car, and many of you are driving a Mercedes Benz and making $40,000 a year. Many of you are driving a BMW and you only make $50,000 a year. And the upkeep and the maintenance on the car is killing you. And the gas is killing you. And the car is a depreciating asset. It's not an asset that's actually that appreciates or makes you any type of, you know, cash flow. So you have to think about that. Took it down to Miami, got on the track. 183 is what I hit. After that, I got um, super afraid. So I stopped. Now look right here, right now. Just look at the cars that he has here. This car, and now he has, I believe that's a Rolls Royce. This isn't his car. That's probably one of the people filming. This man probably has $3 million worth of cars sitting in his driveway right now. This is what is known as opportunity cost. What if he took that $3 million and he put that into Apple? Let's say that he took $2 million and he took $100,000. And he put it into 20 different investments. And I'm, don't worry, I'm going to actually pull out the calculator and break it down for you right now. What if he took $2 million and took $100,000 out of that $2 million and simply invest in 20 different opportunities? Put some money in gold. Put some money in silver. Put some money in real estate. Put some money in Apple. Put some money in Facebook. Put hundred grand in Bitcoin. Put hundred grand into Ethereum. How much money do you think he would be worth today? Versus he put $2 million into a car. See, that's what is known as opportunity cost. And don't worry, I'm going to give you the definition because this is important that you guys understand opportunity cost. When you sink money into a car and that car depreciates and then five years years later, you're broke 
And you could have took that same $2 million and put it into assets that pay dividends and also appreciate with inflation. That's opportunity cost. It says, what is opportunity cost? When you hear the term opportunity cost, you are hearing a fancy word for trade-off. Every time you make a choice, there is a trade-off to consider. You must analyze what you are gaining as, as well as what you may be giving up. The most basic definition of opportunity cost is the price of the next best thing you could have done had you not made your first choice. Some economists like to break down opportunity cost into explicit versus implicit. I want you to think about that. He had $2.1 million that he put into a car and he could have put $2.1 million into multiple assets. Multiple assets. Even if five of those assets went to zero, but 15 of, the, 15 of those assets doubled, he made back for that money and some. See, you gotta, you have to really, you have to start thinking about the opportunity costs. And I wanted to finish playing this for you. Give me one second. This is not the right video. We don't even need this video. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Very hard to stop. I didn't think I was gonna be able to get two million dollars, more or less, a two million dollar car. Look at this. This is two. This is a two million dollar car here. This Rolls Royce is probably five hundred thousand, and this car right here is five hundred thousand. That's three million dollars worth of cars sitting here. So not only did he sink three million dollars into cars, but ended up having to give these cars back anyway. You know what I'm saying? And then still be able to live. <laughs> so it's pretty. It's pretty much an accomplishment for me, man. Now what I want to do is I want to show you also his house and the way he lives, right? Because this type of stuff is important. Uh, I don't want to play the audio because I don't want to get a copyright. So I just want you to see what he has in his house. The way, first of all, look at the, look at the chain around his neck. That chain on his neck is probably $150,000, $200,000. Right. And I want you to start I want you to start applying this to yourself. Do you have a whole bunch of Jordans laying around your house? Do you have a whole bunch of designer clothing laying around your house? Are you driving a BMW? Are you driving a Mercedes Benz and only making forty thousand dollars a year? Are you maxing out your credit cards and only making minimum payments every single month? Right? Are you eating out every Friday and Saturday? Are you going out and hitting the bar and partying hard? Right? Start thinking about the conspicuous consumption that you're doing in your life. That's relevant to him. You have to think about this. Look at this. Look at all of the stuff that he has in his house. All of these skateboards and all of the. And again, I'm not telling you. I'm not clocking anyone's money. I'm not. I'm not pocket watching. I'm just showing you. This is conspicuous consumption. This is living above your means, right? This is. This is consuming. This is consuming things that you don't need. And this is not thinking about future generations. Again, look look at just look at his house. Look at this stuff. All of these hats, I guarantee you these hats probably are thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. All of these little top hats that you see here, easily. It's probably like 20, 30 grand in top hats. Look at this. Louis Vuitton. High fashion. And again, this is not knocking the brother. This is this is using this as an ability to learn that this is opportunity costs. And I'm going to show you what he could have done with that same two million dollars that he put in the car. You have to think about this. And what happens is because these people are celebrities and they have influence over us, a lot of us we try to mimic and imitate and you know imitate what we see them doing, and it just it doesn't work. Like look at the, these 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 Gucci shoes. And these little chests that the shoes come into, that's easily probably like five grand, ten grand right there, guys. So that's where the 40 million went. 
Now, luckily for him, he was able to bounce back. Most people don't bounce back from this. Look at this. He has an arcade in his house. Yeah, listen, I'm not knocking him. Don't think that this is me attacking him. This is just me simply using this to educate you. This is conspicuous consumption. Look at this. A, a scale with money sitting in his house. So we can clearly see that this brother blew a lot of money. Now, again, as I said earlier, it's clear that he uh, has battled substance abuse people, uh, substance abuse issues. So we, we spoke about opportunity costs, where that money could have been invested versus put into a car. And I'm going to cover later on about how cars lose value the minute you drive it off the lot and understanding different interest rates. Now, uh, good debt versus bad debt. A lot of people don't understand that debt could be an instrument used to actually build wealth. If you're buying investment properties, primarily multifamily units, and you're renting them out and you're getting the cash flow on a monthly basis, that's good debt. Then there's bad debt, like you know, buying a $2 million car, buying a BMW, that's not good debt. Especially when you don't have that type of income to support that type of a car, that's bad debt. It says, not all debt is bad. Bad debt is used for consumption. Takes money out of your pockets and makes you poor. On the other hand, good debt is used to buy assets. Puts money into your pockets and makes you rich. Again, Rich Dad Poor Dad is a book I encourage many of you to go and read. They also have the audio book on YouTube somewhere for free. The Millionaire Next Door. Building wealth over time. Not trying to get rich quick. Right? Not trying to get rich quick, but building wealth over over time. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm what I'm speaking about right now. This right here is an investment calculator. I like to always start on the low end and then work my way up to the high end. Low end, right? Start with realistic expectations. Not trying to go crazy. If you start with $0, right? You're 20 years old, 40 years your average return rate is 5%. 5%. We're not talking about 10%. We're not talking about 80%. And you just simply contribute $10,000 on a yearly basis. $10,000. Because you should be, first of all, you should be living off of a 60-40 split. So if you make $50,000 a year, you should be living off of $30,000. And you should be saving and investing 20,000. Let me say that again for those of you in the back who may not hear me. You should have a 60 40 split with your lifestyle. Try to get it lower if you could. So that means if you make $50,000 net, not gross, but net, if you net 50 grand on a yearly basis and you have a 60 40 split, you put $20,000 into investments and savings, you put $30,000 into your lifestyle. That makes sense. So if you take $10,000 every year and you just simply get an average return of 5%, yes, there are going to be some years, like last year, the market returned over 20%. And then you have some years where the market may be down. We're talking about on average, right? Your end balance after 40 years will be $1,207,997. Your total contribution would be $400,000. And the total interest would be $807,000. And look, just follow it. This is not complicated. Guys, this is not getting rich quick, right? We're talking about over a 40 year time period. Now, obviously, you could be more aggressive, you can contribute more, but we're just talking about slow and steady, thinking about the next generation, not thinking about yourself. Now, granted, if you're poor, this is not for you. We know about the racial wealth gap, we know about the data. I'm not talking to you. If you're poor, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those of you who have the ability to earn wages. I'm talking to those of you because my demographic, I look at my data and I can see most of the people who watch my videos, 75% of you are males and you're over the age of 35. If you're a male and you're over the age of 35, most likely many of you are working and you're earning income.
So now you take ten thousand dollars. You that's what you start at the end of the year, and look, it just grows and it grows and it grows. Counting interest, you make five hundred interest over the, the first year. It turns to a thousand, and here we go. At the end of forty years, and I'll put this in here for you to go and play with this. Oh, I don't know why it's not letting me pay. It's not letting me put it in there for some reason. That's weird. Copy. It's not letting me put it in the chat. It's not letting me. I'm trying to paste it in the chat. It won't let me paste it. Paste plain text. Yeah. Oh, it exceeds the limit. So you know what? Let's just do this. I know what to do. Give me one second, guys. I'm trying to put this in the chat for you. So you can go and, you know, take a look at this type of stuff. This type of stuff is important. So you you need to you need to pay attention to now some of you are saying 30 32 I'm talking about the what the data is telling me from YouTube so many many it says all prime investment ages of course 32 33 32 32 30 all all the now uh, Mr G said a 60 40 sounds heavy handed takes discipline then do 70 30 you don't first it's like it's like going on a diet right think about this if I wanted to lose weight. I'm not going to go immediately and go to the gym and start sprinting on the treadmill at speed nine. Right? You have to ease your way into these things. Some of you may need to fix your credit. Some of you may need to get a better employment. Whatever the case may be, this is where you should be aiming towards. Right? You should have a goal, what you're building towards. That's how people do things. They build towards something. So... The goal may be able to, may be to get to 60 40 one day. So start with 80 20. Live over 80%, save 20, and then work your way up over time. You don't have to do this in one night. Work your way up over time. That's what you want to do. But you can see with just a modest investment strategy, 40 years, 5%, you're only contributing $10,000 a year. $10,000 a year. It's all you're doing, whether it's to real estate, whether it's to stocks, crypto, whatever the case may be. And I'm going to show you how it all works out in a second. Now, the next thing I want to get to is predatory lending. Because what happens to a lot of us is that because we're not financially literate and we don't know, and many of us are like T-Pain, right? And we're buying, we're over-consuming cars, we're you know, going out and traveling, hitting the bar too much, having too many children that we cannot take care of. Right? Maybe getting married at a young age, all of those things will cost you money. I came across an article about payday loans and how primarily in South Carolina, they were targeting African-Americans. And see, this type of stuff is important because there is a lot of car dealerships and credit cards and, you know, hard money lenders, et cetera, payday loans, loan sharks, et cetera, who target black people because we lack financial literacy. And we don't understand money and how money works. So it says how debt plays into the South Carolina Democratic primary. Predatory loans target African-Americans in state report says. In the 20 minutes it takes Reverend Brenda Lynn Neese to drive from her home in Columbia, South Carolina to her church about 15 miles north, she passes by at least two dozen billboards and businesses offering payday loans. This goes back to targeting. See, they give you the rapper like T Pain. They show you the 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 nice jewel the, the, the nice jewels that they have. They show you the nice cars that they have. They show you the nice women in the homes and the traveling. And then you go out and you try to you know emulate and imitate that, and 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 it, it just it doesn't work. Right. Like it, it, it won't work because many of these rappers who are selling you that lifestyle, they're broke. As you just was able to witness with T-Pain, he's broke. And yet you're going to go out and try to follow one of these singers or rappers and they're broke. And now these payday loans, these people, they exploit that. They exploit the idea that a lot of us want to be like a celebrity. It says Lynn Neese says she's often approached at the church by people who've borrowed from these places, fallen deeply into debt, and are pleading for financial help. Now, this is where 
personal responsibility and accountability comes into play. This is where you cannot let these people entice you into these things. Now, some of you, you're in a position where you don't have any choice, which is why it's important to educate those coming behind you so that they don't make the same mistakes that you make. It's important for us to look at a T-Pain, not to attack T-Pain, not to put T-Pain down, but use this to teach people and give back to our community so that a lot of us that are younger don't fall into these traps. In this economy, a job is easy to have filled, she said by phone from her home. If an employee misses a day or two, she can get fired. She goes to payday lenders, borrowers, and is expected to pay that back in two weeks. It's a seduction into taking what's promoted as an easy way out of trouble. It goes back to in college. I remember when I first went to college, they had Discover, Discover It, the credit card company. They had a booth at my school. The first week when the freshmen get to college, they're already trying to get you into credit card debt. A lot of these banks are preying on, you know, banks and payday lenders and credit card companies. They prey on ignorance. Even car companies, they prey on your ignorance. Like one of the tricks that car companies do when you go to get a car is they don't tell you. They just take your information and run your credit. And what happens is in most cases, the dealership hits your credit and then the financing arm of the car company hits your credit. So now they have you trapped and locked in because they've hit your credit twice now. And they don't tell you that they're going to run your credit. If you don't know any better and you write your social down on that paper, they just go run your credit. Now you have two inquiries on your credit. So now they have you stuck because if you leave, you've done hit your credit twice. Now, if you hit your credit, you know your score goes down. So a lot of these dealerships, what they do is they automatically just run your credit without telling you, and now they have you trapped. These are the tricks and the games that they play. Many of these payday loans, what they'll do is that if you miss a payment, they jack the rate up to you know, 22, 28% on you, and they attach all of these fees, which is why there's good debt and there's bad debt. A payday loan is bad debt. A credit card to go travel and hit the bar at your friends, that's bad debt. Cash flow in real estate, particularly uh, multifamily units, that's good debt. It's a bit of a thing. As President Donald Trump seeks re-election on what he calls a blue-collar boom and economic growth and jobs, Democrats say millions of Americans aren't feeling the benefits. South Carolina, which will be the biggest and most diverse state to pick a candidate so far, offers evidence for both arguments. How many times have I highlighted to you that Main Street is not feeling the boom of this economy? The boom is in the financial economy where most people aren't, everyday Americans aren't in that economy that's booming. How many times do I talk to you about this chart right here? This is all of the debt. There's $74 trillion worth of debt in the system. There's less than $1.6 billion of cash. These payday loans, they get you on a hamster wheel because you don't want to take your credit. So now what does it do? It puts you on a hamster wheel, forcing you to have to go and work for dollars. This is why it's important to understand debt. It's important to understand opportunity costs because if you're paying high interest rates on these payday loans, if you're paying high interest rates on these auto loans, that's money that could be going into your retirement account, to your investment account. Here's a tip. If you can't buy it with cash, don't buy it with credit. Here's a tip for you. If you can't buy it with cash, don't buy it with credit. And I'm talking about small things like shoes, you know, groceries. Don't do it. Don't don't fall for the trap because you'll end up being like T-Pain where you overconsume. And then now it falls back on you. It says African Americans who make up a majority of South Carolina's Democratic primary voters are a particular target for predatory lenders, according to Appleseed, which says the problems of household debt should be a major focus uh, for Democrat for Democratic candidates. Household debt. 
How many times in videos do I break this down about debt? This is the debt. This is the it's $74 trillion worth of debt sitting in the system. Be smart about debt. Be smart. Now, um, Pierre Gusso says something really smart, and I like that. He says, I buy with a credit card at the store, and then I go home and pay it off right away. That's smart. If you're trying to play the points game, that's smart. But most people aren't that disciplined. I agree with you. If you know you have the income to pay it, that's different, right? But a lot of people are going, we know with the data, I broke I broke it down before with the credit card delinquencies, right? We're passing over 14 and a half, over $14 trillion of household debt. For, think about it, $14 trillion of household debt. And there's only... $1.6 trillion in the banking system to cover these debts. So like, collect your points, but you have to pay that off. Now, going into real estate, right? Because T-Pain spoke about how he lost the majority of his money in real estate. I want to go back and play that for you. Real estate. Real estate. Uh, Invest investments. Oh. Jesus Christ, T-Pain. How do you have a headline? <laughs> I can't burger king. Wow. Yeah. After having what's the most you ever had to bank at one time? Uh 40 million. Jesus Christ, T Pain. How do you have a headline? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Forty yeah. million dollars to zero? Yeah. And it was yeah. just all bad spending? No bad investments? Oh, was it? it was it was a lot of bad investments. Uh a lot of things. What that did you invest in that didn't work for forty million dollars? What, what what were you invested in? Real estate. Real estate. Uh, yeah. Shoot. You buy retail? No, but I was letting my manager do it, and he was way more optimistic than I was. <laughs> so what do you mean optimistic? He, like, he would just buy complete dumps and think that we can just paint, and then we should be he didn't know what he was doing. Never sold anything that, that we bought. Uh, Even now, like none of those areas y'all bought in became we gentrified? Had to let, we had to or? let him go. We had to let him go. No, yeah. I mean, we, we just had to let everything go, so, you know. Is uh, there anything if you would have held on to would be worth a lot now? No, not at all. My These God. were in terrible neighborhoods. But where, I didn't know. where? In Florida? <laughs> yeah, it was all in Florida. South Florida. <laughs> 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 because that's where my managers lived. So, it was like, nah, I'll just get some oh, shit down the road. Man. I can check on it every now and then. And it's just like, oh, yeah, crack God. house for it sure. It never worked out. Still never crack house. Out. That goes back. Even real estate could be bad debt if not done correctly. And this goes back to the whole, the, 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 the brother polites, the Umar Johnsons of the world, right? When you take a step back, you have to ask yourself a very simple question. Can they demonstrate to you that they know what they're doing? That's the most important thing. Not can they actually talk about real estate. Can they show you? Can they show you? For example, let me flip the camera around. Right. When you see me speaking, right, I speak about things that I actually own. So when I sit up here and I talk to you about gold, when I sit up here and I speak to you about silver, when I sit up here and I speak to you about crypto, when I speak to you about real estate, these are things that I actually have skin in the game. I have money. This gold coin right here, this gold coin cost me over sixteen hundred dollars. Well, it cost over $1,600 when I got it. It was cheaper than that. But my point is what I'm saying is that I have money into what I'm invested in. I have skin in the game. I'm not sitting up here and talking to you about something I'm reading in the book. I'm not speaking to you about something that I watched a YouTube video on and now I'm trying to do a lecture. I'm actually doing this in real life. And that's important when a person's speaking to you about something that they actually have skin in the game. You can't manage my money if you can't manage your money. Let me say that to you again. You can't manage my money if you can't demonstrate to me that you can manage your own money. I don't want to hear about, you know, all of this, these fancy words and terminology that you can quote and give me. I want to actually see you doing these things in real life. And it's yielding you some type of a benefit is what I want to see. Yes, this is this is uh, this is an ounce. This is um, this is a one ounce American Buffalo uh, gold coin, and this is an American Eagle. This is a one ounce American Eagle, and this is a ledger. This is a what is known as a hard wallet. 
Um, I mean, I have so many of these. I have another one here. Uh, I have another one right here. That's because I do multi-sig just to protect it because I have a lot of crypto. I have a big amount. So I have them in different hardware wallets and in different locations throughout the world. Um, but I invest in these things. So when I speak to you, I'm not speaking to you about something I read in a book. I'm speaking to you about things that I actually have been doing well over, uh, you know, a decade. Now, someone just made a very good comment. We're going to flip back around to the screen. I just wanted to highlight that for you. Um, most athletes and entertainers get robbed by their managers. What you, Most of them, you lose money with your friends and family. You lose money with managers. You lose money with taxes. And you lose with accountants, lawyers, uh, divorce, right? alimony, spousal support, and child support. You have to... If you don't, if you don't focus on your money, excuse me, and people know that you're not focusing on your money, they're going to take advantage of you. There's 221 of you watching this, guys. Please hit the like button. It helps the content rank in the search engines and it gets the content out there. You have to do your due diligence when you are investing. It is important that you do your due diligence. If you don't know something, don't do it. If a person can't explain to you in simple terms and break it down to you, don't do it. Don't invest. Because as I said to you before, when you look at the polites of the world, when you look at the Umars of the world, can Umar Johnson actually show you a school where he actually purchased a school before and actually was able to run the school successfully? Right? Because we, we still don't know that. Can Polite show you some real estate that he actually controls? Because when he showed you cargo miniums, we found out that he had nothing to do with that project. Financial literacy is extremely important. Good debt versus bad debt's important. And now, again, I don't like to come up here and just talk. Right here is bigger pockets. When I first wanted to learn about real estate, I went to this forum. Now, this isn't the only forum to learn from. This isn't the only forum that you can learn from. There's a lot of other places that you can go and you can learn. I'm just giving you a template. Remember, guys, it's like basketball. Some people are shooters. Some people are athletes. Some people are point guards. Some people are centers. Some people, they, they can dribble and shoot. Some people only can dribble, right? Westbrook is a different player than Steph Curry. You have to find your lane. I'm simply giving you a template. Simply giving you a template. You want to learn about real estate? Go read some of these forums. You want to learn about real estate? Type in the particular term you're looking for in YouTube and watch some videos. You don't need to spend $7,500 on some guy's mentor course who hasn't demonstrated to you that he even owns real estate. Find, find what works for you. But this right here, I was able to go through this site and don't buy anything. Just go read some stuff first. Take your time. Grow a little. We're talking about over time. When I show you this calculator, this investment calculator, right? We're talking about over 40 years. We're talking about a return rate of 5%. We're talking about contributing 10,000. Just 10. Guys, just $10,000 a year. We're not talking about nothing crazy. $10,000 a year is all we're talking about. Now, I want to talk about opportunity cost. I want to show you a few stocks. Again, I don't, I'm not one of these guys. I don't want to sit up here and just talk, just throw stuff out there to you. So I want to show you, zoom in some right here. In 2013, he could have purchased JP Morgan stock. I picked the price of $50.15. Let's take a step back. He put $2 million into a Bugatti. What if he took $100,000 and put it into 20 different investments? What if he did that? Instead of him putting the money, because this is what opportunity cost is, instead of putting $2 million into one car, he could have put $2 million into 20 different investments at $100,000 per investment. If he would have did that with J.P. Morgan and he would have purchased J.P. Morgan in 2013, and the reason why I picked 2013 
is because that's when this video was recorded. This video was recorded in June 13th, 2013. So that's why I'm picking 2013. So follow me here. If he would have purchased JP Morgan stock, this is a bank stock, at $50.50 with $100,000, he would have been able to get 1,980 shares. At the current price where JP Morgan is sitting at right now today, it's sitting at $116 per share. That's $229,000. So he would have doubled his money over the same period. So versus losing the car and losing $40 million, if you put $100,000 into JP Morgan, that's $229,000. And that's not even counting the dividends. That's not even counting the dividends that he would have received. But follow me here because this is opportunity cost. Car showing off. Fancy gold chains and platinum chains and silver chains and diamonds and diamond rings and Rolexes or investments. Giving your money to your manager or finding a person to manage your money and knows what they're doing. Apple. Let's look at Apple. In 2013, he could have purchased Apple at $75.12. That's 1,331 shares. At today's current price of $273, that $100,000 would be worth $363,000. $363,418 would be the total of Apple. That's opportunity cost. Tesla. See, this is where things get really, really Really, really interesting because this is the power of opportunity cost. Yes, some of the investments are going to go bad, but then you get that one investment like Tesla, a growth company or like a Chipotle, a new company, right? Because why put $2 million in the car? You already got four. He has four cars. So why put $2 million in the one when you could put $2 million into speculating, into investing? If he would have put two, if he would have put a hundred thousand dollars into Tesla at thirty five dollars a share, that would have gave him two thousand eight hundred and fifty seven shares. Today, right now, where Tesla's sitting at at six six seven, that Tesla, that hundred thousand he put in Tesla, will be worth one million nine hundred five thousand and seven hundred and fourteen dollars. Let me repeat that to you again. He could have purchased Tesla in 2013 for $35 a share. If he would have put $100,000 into Tesla at $35, that would have given him 2,857 shares. At today's current price, that would be worth $1,905,714. That's opportunity cost. He chose to go with a car. He chose to go with chains. Foolishness. How many cars do you need? You only can drive one. How many shoes do you need? You only can wear one pair at a time. How many sneakers do you need? You only can wear one pair at a time. Here's the big one. Because you know, Bitcoin's my thing. He could have purchased Bitcoin in 2013. He could have purchased Bitcoin for 20. One dollars. If you put a hundred thousand dollars into Bitcoin at twenty one dollars, that would be four thousand seven hundred and sixty one Bitcoin. This is going to blow your mind. And this is why I picked this. If he would have purchased Bitcoin at twenty one dollars, the Bitcoin today will be worth forty million seven hundred sixty six thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars. Let me say it for you in the back again. If he took $100,000 and he put it into Bitcoin in 2013 at $21, that would be 4,761 Bitcoin. That Bitcoin today, not at the all-time high, but today would be worth $40,766,666.
Now think about that. Because you know you're going to have the trolls come on here and say, oh, well, things don't work like that. Let's say you got 20 investments. Let's say all 10 of them lost money. They went to zero, which we know is impossible. But let's say 10 out of the 20 investments went to zero and he lost a million dollars. The Bitcoin and the Tesla investment alone would have took care of any of the losses he would have had. That's the power. That's the power of this investment calculator. That's the power of the millionaire next door. That's the power of accumulating wealth over time. That's the power of speculating over time. Not getting rich. You don't hear me talking to you about getting rich. I'm highlighting things and showing you. That's opportunity cost. So when I show you this definition, that's opportunity cost. When you see this fool, and I, I have to call him a fool, right? But when you see this, this is the car that he purchased. So don't say to me that I'm cherry picking. I'm not cherry picking. I'm not cherry picking. He purchased a $2.1 million car. He already had four cars in his driveway. He had a, 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 Ro, a Phantom, a Rolls Royce. He had two. I'm not saying not to live nice. I'm not saying not to get nice things. I'm not pocket watching. I like nice stuff too. I like BMWs, I like Mercedes Benz, I like a Tesla. But I also know that I only can drive one car at a time. I also know that I don't need a $2.1 million car. I know that I could take that $2.1 million and put it into JP Morgan. I can put it into Apple. I can put it into Tesla. I can put it into Bitcoin. So again, you have to take that, you have to take that step, you, you have to take that, that time out to analyze these things and ask yourself, what makes the most sense to you? What should you be doing? What should you be looking to do in your life? I don't promise you get rich quick. I promise you build wealth over time. $10,000 a year investing. Yes. Are you going to lose some money? Absolutely. Will there be years where the market's down? Absolutely. Will you get a will you get into a real estate deal that may not work out properly? Absolutely. Which is why you need financial literacy because anytime you buy something you need to have an exit strategy. You need to have an exit strategy when you're getting into things. What do I talk to you about about pendulums? About things going from undervalued to overvalued. Right? You don't invest you don't invest in Tesla when it's going vertical like this. You missed it. You you don't you don't you don't start investing in Tesla when it's doing this. You missed the move. You invest back here. Thank you. That's a whoa. That's the biggest donation I've ever received. I appreciate that. Appreciate the information, bro. Keep doing your thing. I hope your channel sticks around for the long time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Supreme Cinema. Appreciate it. That's the biggest one I got. Oof. <laughs> I guess I guess I must be doing a good job. Thank you, Mr. Supreme Cinema. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, but this right here, you don't buy Tesla when it's doing this. You've missed the boat. You get in back here and you dollar cost average. You buy a little bit here. You buy at $35. You buy what? 10 shares, 15 shares. Buy a little bit over time. Buy a little bit over time. Look what it does. It's moving sideways. You're not day trading this. This is your. This is what you're building for your family. This is what you're building for when you're not here. This is what the purpose of this is for. And then when you get this move, then you start saying, okay, I hit my retirement. Guys, back here, Bitcoin was a scam. This, this thing is not going to work. Back here, it was a scam. It's the scam. It's a scam. This is the purpose of building things over time. Take your time. Educate yourself. It's not a rush. We're talking about 30 years, 40 years. I, I look at the data. Most of you are between the ages of 35. Some of you said you're 32, 33. So I know you're above 30. You're at that age now where you have to start thinking about building wealth. Do you want to have a closet full of clothes and shoes or do you want to have things that you can actually build and hold on to and give to your children? These are things that you have to ask yourself about. Now, 
going back to this Bugatti that he was speaking about. Um, right here, let's play it. Three down to Miami, got on the track. 183 is what I hit. After that, I got um, super afraid. So Look I at stopped. This. So you can see right here. This is the this is the Bugatti. This is the Rolls Royce that he has. As I showed you in the previous video, he has about three of these cars. That's three million dollars in cars, right? Now, this is important because this goes back to predatory lending. Our data shows that cars can lose more than 10% of their value during the first month after you drive off the lot. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that when you're buying these cars. Now, yes, I know that these luxury cars, they can appreciate in value over time. But we're talking about you now, right? We're using him as a tool so that you can look, start analyzing the things that you're doing in your life. Our data shows that cars can lose more than 10% of their value during the first month after you drive off the lot. The amount of your car is is worth will just keep falling too. According to current depreciation rates, the value of a new vehicle can drop by more than 20% after the first 12 months of ownership. Think about that. Think about that. 20%. The car can lose 20% of its value in the first year. Now, again, we know what the, these luxury cars like the Bugattis and the Rolls Royces, those are more collector's items. So, yes, I know that they can appreciate over time. We're not talking about that now. We're talking about you. Think about this. So when you go and buy these new cars, you have to think about this. Now, again, this is from Carfax.com. So now we're going to talk about used cars versus new cars. This type of stuff is important. It's important that, especially if you have children and they're 18, 19, 20 years old, you have to, you have to sit them down. You can't talk at your children. You have to talk to your children. You can't talk at your children. You have to talk to your children. And you have to show them because they're impressionable. They're young. They may not know any better. Because I wish I knew a lot of this stuff when I was 18, 19 years old. I wish I had my parents engaging me this way and, and talking to me. What you can and can't learn from the average car payment. The average monthly car payment is $530 for new cars and $381 for used cars. That has little to do with yours. I want you to think about that. The average car payment is $530. It says, the average monthly car payment reveals some interesting aspects of the auto financing market, but figuring out what you should pay requires a more personalized approach. The average monthly car payment, car loan payment in the US was $530 for new vehicles and $381 for used ones originated in the third quarter of 2018. According to credit reporting agency Experion, the average lease payment was $430. If those figures seem high, that's because they are, and they are all up year over year. <clears throat> think about that. I want you to think about that. <clears throat> so let's start looking at this, right? What happens to a lot of people who purchase used cars is that most of them have lower uh, credit scores, right? So you can see the credit score right here is 661. So the monthly payment right here, this person is borrowing, here we go, $30,977 at 5% interest. Their payment's $530 a month. Their loan term is 68 and a half months. 
I want you to think about this. What if this person with the credit score 714 said, you know what? I don't need to borrow $30,000 for a car. I'm going to only borrow 20 and get the $381 payment. What if the person, what if the person thought that way, which is more intelligent to think that way, right? Rather than getting the expensive car just because you have a $714 credit score. Now I want you to follow me because I'm about to go somewhere, right? That's an extra $149 a month that this person's paying. And if you fix the interest rate, you can probably drop it by another 15, 20 bucks, right? So let's just drop this by, let's drop this by another 20. That's $129, right? If you take $129, right, on a monthly basis, right, let's just put this in a calculator. Let's calculate this. $129 a month. Let me calculate it. Right? $129 per month over 40 years. See, this th This is how people get rich. Because you're saying to yourself, oh, man, it's only $129. It's only $149. That's, that, what is that? Over 40 years, if you took, the, if, if you kept that mentality, because a lot of you do this, you go, oh, it's only $129. Well, what if you took the $129 and you put that into this account every month? What if you did that? What if you just simply did that? Right? What if you did that? Please invest in black tech in 2020. I'll definitely take a look at what you have, uh, Sonic Strains. Uh, thank you for the donation. What if you did that? What if you did that? No, I said, what if the person with good credit, follow me here. I probably misspoke. Let me correct that for you. I said, what if the person with the 714 credit score got this payment? Now, obviously, I subtracted it because the difference is $149, but the interest rate is higher, which is why I dropped it by $20, right? So I simply just said, drop it by $20. And I brought the payment down to $129, right? We're just, this is a hypothetical, right? This is not meant to be, remember, this is a template, guys, right? It's not meant to be to the T, number for number, right? We're just, we're, we're playing, we're playing with numbers. I'm trying to plant a seed in your mind, right? It's not about having the numbers 100% to the T. What I'm saying to you is that if you throw away $129 like that every month, go, go look over your bills. Go look at what you're paying more for that you don't need. Go look at if you're overpaying for your cable bill or you're over consuming. Just because you have this high credit score doesn't mean you have to get this high payment, right? Because you can go, you can get the lower payment and get a cheaper car, right? So if you, if you save $129 a month and you compound that, look at the money. Start thinking about that. That's $191,000. Just think about that for a second. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Man, that's 1548 for the year, so we could play with this again. You could just keep coming in here and just play with numbers. Calculate it for the year. Just play with it. You start with zero. The end of the year, 1548, right? Compounded return rate 5%. Do it on a yearly basis. Play with it. Start thinking about where that's $186,000 over a 40 year period. Go through your bills and start thinking about where you overpay at. $129 a month, you're giving away $1,500 a year. Let me repeat that for you again. If you're giving away $129 every month, 129 times 12 is $1,548 that you're giving away because you want to consume the nice car because you have a high credit score, right? So we're not using these exact numbers. We're not using the 9% and the 5%. We're saying, what if we instead 
didn't get this nice car because we have the high credit score. And we got the used car and got the lower and got the lower payment and we saved one hundred and twenty nine dollars. Right. That's what we're playing the hypothetical. way. I'm trying to paint a picture in your mind. Because, see, this is how car dealerships get rich. This is how the wealthy build wealth. Because you say, oh, it's only one hundred and twenty nine dollars. They say, wow, that's one hundred and twenty nine dollars. And they go and get thousands of you to give them that extra one hundred and twenty nine dollars every single month. And like I'm showing you right now, if you contribute one thousand five hundred forty eight dollars into your investment accounts and you get a return rate of five percent. At the end of 40 years, that's $186,998. And I'm being modest with 5%. The S&P on average returns over 8%. I'm being modest. I'm not, I'm not telling you about getting rich overnight. I'm just showing you. I'm giving you ideas. I'm planting a seed. I'm giving you a template of how you can think. You're not supposed to take this literally and go and just, oh, I'm going to do everything that he said. No, you have to sit down and formulate your own plan because guess what? You may can invest 15000 a year, 20000 a year, right? You may want to do, you may want to have a portfolio where you're over leveraged, uh, you're, um, you're over invested into more speculative things like a Bitcoin or crypto and you under, you're underweight in things like traditional stocks. You have to figure that out. You have to think about these things and put these things together, right? Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is this. And I bring this up all the time. I know, I know some of you have already seen this, but I need to bring this up. <clears throat> uh, and there's 209 of you watching this, guys. Please hit the like button. It helps the content rank in the search engines. We know, I like to show you guys this Excel spreadsheet every time. We know for a fact Every year, the government on average is running 3% inflation. That's if you trust the government's numbers. You know me. I don't trust the numbers. I believe inflation is much higher than 3%. But let's just say inflation is 3%. Every single year, we can see inflation, 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 the rate, right? We can see that every year. This is not, we're not guessing here, right? We're not guessing. We can see that. I had a guy come on my video and tell me that, Oh, you know, why would you want to buy gold and silver if there's a collapse? Well, let's take a step back. Number one, I say this all the time and I'm going to say it again. So let me, let me flip this around. Give me one second, guys. Hold it real quick. Give me one second. I'm back one second right so let's flip this around now so i always constantly keep seeing people talk about you know why do you always talk about gold why do you talk about silver why do you talk about crypto if we have a collapse you know you better off putting your money into you know water land of course when have you ever heard me say that if we have a currency crisis a collapse and people are rioting in the streets that you're going to run around with this little silver coin and you know um that's going to you i'm going to go outside while the, the power grid is down and i'm going to say here you want my gold coin or hey i'm going to give you my cryptocurrency if we're in a collapse like that i want guns i want land right i want resources because if you go outside with this the people are going to take it from you. If you go back and you look at when they outlawed gold and when they made it illegal to own gold and the people had to give their gold back. When they finally opened it back up and let people be able to purchase precious metals, the value of precious metals went up. The value of the purchasing power of the money went down. This has been money for thousands of years. It will continue to be money. This right here. Is currency. This is currency. Currencies come and go. Go through American history and see how many different currencies. 
Go through the history and see. This, this is just paper. They come and go. This will be forever. What this does for me is that when we have the reset, it allows me to maintain my purchasing power. Let me say it to you again. This allows me to maintain my purchasing power because guess what? I'm trading the most valuable asset that you have, your time for paper. So think about it now. You work 30 years, 40 years, and then you have a currency problem or you have high inflation. That means you've traded your money for something that's losing value. I want to be able to maintain my purchasing power because I've traded my time for that piece of paper. And I want my 50,000, my 100,000, my 200,000 that I had saved up to be able to buy the same goods and services 20 years from now, 30 years from now. That's why I buy it. So common sense, which is why I named my channel. What happened to common sense? Follow me here. If I have savings, Yes, I need to have some savings in cash. I also need to have some savings in precious metals. Why? Because I know for a fact my money's losing 3% every year. So why would I want to hold on to something that I know is losing 3% every year? Jerome Powell, your Federal Reserve Chairman, is telling you inflation is too low. He's telling you it's too low. He wants to create more inflation. Now, you're right. Listen here. See, I want to teach you. I can't eat this. I can't eat this. I can't drink it. I can't drink this. That's why this is money. I know you're probably saying, what the hell do you mean? The reason why this is used as money is because it's a fixed supply. I don't have to worry about my cattle getting sick and me losing my wealth. I don't have to worry about other animals eating my cattle. This is why gold and silver got picked as money because it stays stable. It stays stable. I know you're probably saying, what, what do you mean? It's money because we don't have to worry about the supply disappearing and leaving. You can melt it down and make it another bar, bake it into another coin. If you deal with commodities, you have supply disruptions because your cattle may get sick. You may have a bad crop. You use the oil. You don't use gold and silver. You trade it so it stays stable. That's why it's always been money because it's stable. It's hard. It's physical. You can't print it. It doesn't get sick. It doesn't get a disease. It doesn't get a pandemic. That's why it's money. Because the supply will always be the same. That's why it's money. This is currency based off of debt. Wrap your mind around that. This is, I speculate in crypto. Now, one day, one day, this may turn to digital gold, but it's not there yet. It's trying to be that. Now, thank you for the donation, Sonic Streams. He says, what income level warrants a 90K Lambo? That's personal finance. Here we go. Excuse me. I have $10 million. Say I have $10 million. I'm a millionaire. Do I go out? and only buy real estate? Do I only buy stocks? Do I only buy gold? Or do I say I'm going to be diversified, right? I'm going to have financial freedom where I have more money coming in from multiple sources than it's going out. I have a great balanced portfolio. Then yeah, you could go get the Lambo. I never said it was nothing wrong with... T-Pain didn't do anything wrong with getting the Rolls Royce. You know what T-Pain went wrong? He got a drop top Rolls Royce, a hard top Rolls Royce, a $2 million Bugatti, right? Get one Lambo. If T-Pain would have only got one Lambo and took the rest of that money and invested it, it would be no problem. No problem. There's nothing wrong with getting nice stuff. So let's say you make a half a million dollars a year. 
There's nothing wrong with getting a Lambo if you have investments. Right? But if all you have is cars and top hats and gold chains and a bunch of fancy watches and you have no cash flow coming in and you have no assets appreciating, that's stupid. That's dumb. That's not smart. So it's not an income threshold. It's a lifestyle threshold. Do you need three luxury cars? Do you? Do you need three luxury cars? Do you need three big, large homes? No. You just don't. So it's not an income threshold. It's a lifestyle threshold. And it's a common sense threshold. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to look at the chat now. He went wrong by not paying attention to his money. 100%. Too many sixes for me. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, hats and, and jewelry is no health insurance. Yep. Top hats, real talk, though. Yeah, that was just stupid. Uh, people like T-Pain are the ones who will be enriched because they will use their funds to enrich whites. Of course, they're done with their money. I came in late. Does T-Pain own his masters? Um, Actually, that's what actually saved T-Pain. I don't think it was the masters. Um, Let me make sure I said this correctly. He gets royalty. T-Pain never got paid for features that he did on songs. He only received royalties. And he said that's what actually ended up helping him out. In the long run, I don't know exactly if he owns his uh, publishing and all that. I don't know. I didn't look into that. I really just looked into um, a real talk. Don't worry, real talk. I'm working on the um, video that you wanted me to do. I'm working on that now as we speak. Real talk. So don't worry about it. I'm working on it. I'll add that to the list too. DNA sequencing. I don't know anything about that, guys. That's out of my wheelhouse. Um, yeah, this, li this live is going to be uploaded in the, probably the next 20 minutes. Um, but real talk, I trust me, I'm working on the video. I'm doing the information. Thank you for the donation that you gave me. Um, I'm doing the research and the due diligence on what you asked me. Also, the spear asked me about Bitcoin IRAs. I'm doing that too. Remember, it, it's it's hard for me to, I don't, I don't like to just throw information out there like that. I like to take my time and really know what I'm speaking about. So that's why I'm just taking my time. The video should probably be up by Monday or Tuesday. So um, again, trust me, I, I know... I know that you donated and I definitely will take care of you. I promise. Um, do will you have a teaching pro? No, not right now. I don't have a teaching program. Many of you have reached out to me. Um, I'm, and as I said before, I'm thinking about putting together a membership site or Patreon. It's going to be something around 20 bucks, 10 bucks. It's not going to be anything expensive. It's not going to be no $7,000 mentorships or no crazy stuff like that. It's going to be affordable, like a Netflix subscription. It'll be very, very cheap. It won't be anything. Um, expensive at all like i said it'll be around 10 20 bucks on a monthly basis uh thank you for the donation real talk it'll, it'll be very 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 affordable i don't believe in as i said before you're never going to see me on here selling you thousand dollar mentorships and all that because this is the information age guys there's no reason why i should be charging you that kind of money for information i'm sorry there's just no reason to be charging that kind of money um for, for like seventy five hundred dollars for a mentorship thirty five hundred dollars for a mentorship is just no, unless unless that person is like, you give me thirty five hundred dollars and I'm plugging you right into a business, or I'm giving you seventy five hundred dollars and I'm plugging you into a business, then it's like I'm not gonna just pay seventy five hundred dollars to listen to you talk. I'm just not going to do it. Like I'm not. I, there's no reason why you should be spending that kind of money to listen to someone talk on videos. Like seventy five hundred dollars for a video? No, I'm sorry. I, I just I can't see that. Do you think that the student loan debt will be uh, restored by the next president? Um, I believe that they are going to use that to get votes. You have to understand that there's something known as the Senate, the House, right? And you bills don't just get passed, right? We have a government. We have three branches of government. So you need to really w focus more on your, you know, the congressmen and women because they are the ones who's going to be able to allow legislation to get passed and get through um, and become law. And what you're going to see people like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders do is use, it's called politics, problem, reaction, solution. They're going to promise you everything under the sun. And when Bernie and them get in the office, it's probably going to be more of the same. Uh, 
Will it be will it be more money printing, more debt monetization? Yeah, but they're using the student loan crisis as a way to get your vote. They're really not going to fix anything, honestly. Um, and then once you understand inflation, once you understand the Fed and you understand money creation, you understand that even if they try to enact a lot of the policies, it's only going to make the problem worse, not better. Um, Printing money doesn't benefit us because our system is broken, right? It's not education that's the problem. It's not housing that's the problem. It's the system. We have a system that's based off of debt, right? Money is debt. Thank you for the donation, Castle Dragon. Uh, what should we expect from the market come Monday? Is it too early? I think the market's actually going to rally if, based upon what the Fed said, you know, with the Fed basically saying that they're ready to act as far as cutting interest rates, I see the market... I wouldn't say necessarily rallying, but the market, you're, you're probably not going to see extreme selling, right? You're probably not going to see um, the market sell off crazy. Now, we have our sec. We have four cases now here with the coronavirus. We have two in Seattle and we have two in California. If we see an acceleration with that, then yeah, we can definitely see the market sell off. So we we just, we don't know. Um, uh, Mac Ar Arden said quantitative easing. Yeah. I mean, the Fed, I showed y'all guys yesterday, the Fed can't stop QE. If, Fed, if the Fed stops QE, the market crashes. They can't. They can't. They have to have QE going on because the minute that they start to put that supply back in the market, it's, it's just, it's going to be a problem. It has to keep being QE. But as I said before, politicians use pain things to, um, uh, to, uh, to get your votes. It's just manipulation. That's what it is right now. So um, they are never going to eradicate student loan debts. People need to uh, be in debt in order to stay the employee trimmer. Of course, Mr. J, that's the, that's the whole point. Uh, that's what I said. Um, it's a hamster wheel. Once you, let me flip it over right here. And once you understand this, once you understand this chart right here, you understand that this, this blue line is the debt in the system, right? Let me try to balance this properly. This blue line is the debt in the system. $74 trillion of debt in the system. $74 trillion of debt in the system. There's $1.6 trillion of actual cash. That's, that's student loan debt. That's credit card debt. That's household debt. That's home debt. That's debt. Debt is money. And once you understand that, then you understand what the problem is. And you understand that none of these... Do you, hear, do you hear Bernie Sanders talking about the Federal Reserve? Do you hear him talking about changing the way money is created, going back to some type of a sound money? No. So even if they even if they wipe out the student loan debt at the expense of what? Inflation? So yeah, your student loan debt is gone, but the cost of living goes up 15-20%. The cost of education rises another 15-20%. You know, it's you damned if you do, it's, it's the pickle. You know, it's it, it, they call it being in a pickle, being in a jam. Like that, that's what it is. It's it's you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. You know, so that's that's just the way things work. So, um, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, thank you to everyone that's donated tonight. I appreciate it. Castle Dragon, Real Talk, um, Sonic Strains, uh, Mr. Supreme Cinema. I, I appreciate the donation. Sonic Strains again. I know someone else donated earlier. I, it's no longer in the chat. But thank you to everyone who's donated. Uh, please do me a favor and uh, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Also, if you want to contact me, my um, Instagram is below. Follow me on Instagram. That way you can direct message me and we can begin to talk. It's easier for me to dialogue that way than going through email. I can instantly respond. Um, and as I said, real talk and the spirit, don't worry. I got you guys. I'm doing the research as, um, for what you asked me to do. So again, thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out and watching the content and I'll probably do a live stream tomorrow. I want to talk about Bloomberg and the housing crisis and, um, the predatory lending. So I'm probably going to do uh, a stream when I either tomorrow or Monday, uh, cause I also want to talk about Steve Mnuchin and the robo sign that he was doing when they were taking people's houses. So um, I plan on doing that as well. So have a great night. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Be safe and be blessed.